Alright, so let's have a little chit chat real quick um, while I get ready. So don't mind any of this stuff back here. This is just my gym stuff. All my gym clothes, basically. I'm just getting it ready, whatever. I'm trying to find gym clothes to wear. Anyway, so I got some crazy, crazy news, man. I got some crazy news. So basically, two days ago, I met one of my favorite all-time point guards ever. And I don't know if you guys have me on Instagram. If you guys don't have me on Instagram, it's going to be pop up on the screen somewhere. Follow my Instagram right now, immediately. Please. So I was really asking God, like, just to open up some doors and some opportunities, and he ended up really doing it, man. Like, I, I kept praying about it, and I kept praying, like, God, can you please just, like, open up some opportunities? Um, I'm thankful for the things that you're about to do in my life. I'm thanking you in advance for everything. Next thing you know, this opportunity with Kemba happens, and I ended up meeting him and things like that. And one of the things was that made it so special was that he ended up getting a copy of my book, and I was, like, boom, like... It, it was such a uh, another accomplishment I was able to do because he's one of my favorite point guards of all time, like in the league in general. Like I do film study on this guy like every single day, and it's crazy. And it's crazy because like when I seen him, he's only five ten, and I'm five seven. So when I seen him, I took a picture with him and all that. He's literally like three inches taller than me, and it's like, bro, this dude really is really killing people in the league and has one of the highest paid contracts and he's really doing this stuff like he's really od bro long story short man i ended up meeting kemba and it was it was just crazy man kemba walker i was the first actual nba player i really had a good conversation with i had asked him some questions he, he's extremely humble he's a great guy he's mad chill bro he's just mad chill bro like he he remembers where he came from i'm telling you kemba walker was cool people bro he was cool all right so my trainer said he's outside right now so let's go get to work and let's get it Seven hundred makes. We done, bro. Hey, man, we pushing ourselves today. We pushed ourselves today. Got better. Shot got more water. Let's get it, man. Hi, man. How you doing? Can I get a a, a bacon, egg, and cheese wake up wrap? And a vanilla frosted donut. Vanilla frosted. Yeah, and, and an orange juice. So bacon wrap, vanilla frosted, and orange juice. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Thank you. That'll be all. Thank you. Sweet. Yeah. Right now it's about to be seven o'clock. So and it just got done clearing up. Like the rain just started clearing up and everything. So it's sixty-eight degrees. Now I'm gonna go and uh you know do my run, my daily run. I can actually go out and do it now. So um let's go ahead and bang this out. Let's get it. Good morning, fam. So, don't mind my hair. My hair's a little messed up, yada, yada, yada. It's 8.44 in the morning. So, you guys know how I still do Forex and stuff like that, right? A lot of you guys think that Forex is a scam. No, it's not, bro. Look at this. This big, long candlestick, I just bought it. But then I took the money out. I'm going to show y'all. This is how much I got in my account. 
I and I took some L's earlier, but this is how much I just made just now. $26. I'm telling y'all, it's not a scam, bro. I just entered a trade. I'm up $2, bro. No, now I'm down, but it's gonna happen. Look, I'm on the up chain. You see the way it's looking? It's gonna shoot up again. So now, all oh, back. So yeah, see? But US 30 plays with you sometimes, but that's what it'll do. I don't know everything, but I'm I'm smart, bro. So look, see, now I'm up a dollar, 23. Think about US 30, US 30 shoots up high and shoots up quick. So you can lose your money quick or you can you can gain quick. That's why I like US 30. Wow, bro, this is crazy, man. This is crazy, bro. Let me give you all the tour real quick, man. So back here, back there, behind that big old building, basically there was a pool. I don't know if it still is, but there was a pool back there. Every summer we used to go over there with my mom and my dad or whatever. We would go over there, go straight to the pool, get this. Did I know it too, bro? Did I know it? Every summer. Every summer, bro, you go over there. It's crazy. And they really changed up everything too. I know it still look like old, but you know, this is what even did. It didn't look like this before. I remember my old, one of my old friends, Jaylene. Hey, Jaylene, if you see in this, salute to you. Jaylene used to live right there. Uh, we used to get her to come outside. My boys, Ariel, Ariel and David, used to live in that building. That was actually the first building I originally lived in before like I moved over there. And my boy Anise used to live in there. I was my best friend in elementary school. Um, you know, we used to be in there doing our thing. Man, this is crazy, bro. My boy uh, Trey, Trey used to live like, I think right there. We used to go outside right here, do our thing. Before like all the bushes, all the bushes and all that, we used to make this the football, like this was yeah, the football, football. area. Yeah. We used to play like tackle football, all that. Like it was it was lit over here, bruh. It was really lit over here. Every day, bro. like when I really tell you every day, every day was outside. a movie. Every day we was outside, like legit, outside. Telling you, after school, I would come around here, get Kamani, Kamani used to live right there. So we would, I would go bring his door, I would either go to his window, it was right there. Literally right there. I would go to his window. Yo, yo, come outside, bro. Like, let's just go like have some fun or whatever. And yo, this this part right here, this right here was my sanctuary. Yeah, I, I lived here, bro. When I tell you like every day, I, I would skip homework to go right here and play. Every single day, like nonstop. Like, I didn't care. My mom would ask me, did you do your homework? I would say, yeah, but I really didn't do my homework. Cause I'm over here grinding, putting in the work. Sometimes when it would snow and it would rain and all that crap, there would be, you know, there would be like paper and all that stuff, leaves. I would sweep it, like kick it out the way, put cones there. Sometimes I, I didn't have cones. So what I would do is I just put bottled water, like empty bottled waters. And I just did drills, like going around it, working on my handles and things like that. So it was, it's just crazy being around here. When I tell you every day I was here, I was really here, bro. Really here. This park right here, like literally right here, like this would be the chill spot. Me and my boys, like me, Kamani, Tehran, all them boys, like we would come here and just chill. Sometimes like just discuss random crap. So it was cool. So actually matter of fact, building one, I had a couple friends in there. My boy, hey, if Kwame, Kwame, if you seeing this, hey, so, salute to you, bro. Miss you, man. Kwame used to live in there. I used to go over his crib all the time after school and everything. One of my uh, friends, Nasir, used to live right there. We used to play Pokemon, uh, what was it? Pokemon Black on the DS? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You already know it down over here. This building right here, building number two, yo, everything went down here. My boy Anthony used to live here. Yo, it, <laughs> It was crazy, bro. Like, when I tell you, I used to be at Anthony's house every day, like for real, for real. Like every day after school, like constantly, we would do uh, homework with each other. We would watch the Slenderman together, bro. Like it was, we did a whole bunch of stupid, crazy crap. My boy Tehran was with us too. Tehran, shout out to Tehran, man. But we was in here, it was crazy, bro. Like everything went down to here. Right here, down this little pathway right here. Everything went down. We would play Manhunt, Tag, um, whole bunch of games like we would just do so much man like this way was like the little kid alley bro it, it was crazy this spot right here building number three that spot right there believe it or not that that was the old crib that was the old crib man my boys my my me and Jediah's room was literally right there like that first window so Jaden's room was right there my parents room was like on the far right over there 
But man, if I can bring y'all in there, I really wish I could bring y'all in there. We had a neighbor, um, her name was Tanya. We used to, when every time when we was locked out, sometimes we would go up to her room. She had a daughter named Tia. So Tia, used to, her, her room used to be right there. And she'll, Tia would take care of us. She was in high school at the time, so she would take care of us. But man, like, see, this is why I know it really got ghetto. They don't got the number up there anymore. What's wrong with them, bro? <laughs> exactly how them bikes were right there. That's how our bikes used to be. Like, I had an orange and brown bike. I sat it right there. Man, we would, it was just a whole bunch of filled crazy memories here, man. Like, everybody, everybody would come and get me all the time to come outside or whatever, bro. People would run all the way from where we was at earlier, from all the way down there to over here just to come get me and play outside. So like, this John, this John, John is crazy. It's crazy. This one right here, my, one of my best friends, Tyron. This is building, this is building four. Building four, we had a lot of crap going on here too. Tyron used to live right there. I used to go over his house every day because literally my house is literally, was right there and I would literally would walk to come get him every time. I would go to his house whenever my parents wasn't home, I would come to his house, play the game with him. We had a lot of stuff that went on and it was crazy, man. Like, it's, I don't know. It feels so weird just looking at this again, bro. Seeing this whole thing and you know, oh man. And then I had a few friends that lived in building five and building six. So it was cool. This is really like the foundation of everything and how my life really grew up. It's crazy, bro. We used to just run outside and just play here all day, like until like seven o'clock p.m., all like all night, all, all night. night. Like we didn't, we had a, D, obviously we had like a Nintendo DS and PS3 and all that, yeah. but nah, like gaming, it, was, gaming, yeah, gaming was not the same as it was before. We was really outside. We couldn't wait to go outside. Oh, oh so this spot right here, this, was this is a, this is another spot. We would bring the we would bring this Beyblade. We would have a Beyblade tournament right here, bro. We like we would all gather around a circle. The we had like ten rock. people, like ten kids, and then we go let it rip, and then it would happen. And then our friends over here playing tag or whatever. But we have uh, the rest of us tournament. literally in a circle, just like. Just playing, bro. I remember when some, when uh, one of my friends, one of my old friends, older sister, came over here <laughs> and started to like kind of threaten us because one of uh, one of my friends threatened her little brother or something back in that time. So it was crazy. She came over here, made everybody scared or whatever. So everybody went away. <laughs> that was crazy, bro. This was the spot we used to ride our bikes down, but you wasn't allowed to really go in there. You was not allowed to go under there. Sometimes the maintenance, <laughs> the maintenance guys would come out there and be like, yo, what are you doing over here? You're not supposed to be over here. And then we would go in that back area and we would like, you know, yeah, we would loop back around, come back over here and do it again. Like we were just stupid little kids, bro. Right here to right here. This was the bus stop. So the bus, we see where that car is coming. The bus would stop right there. Whole bunch of kids just like chilling, like just waiting for the bus. I remember our first day when Jediah came, it was, I was in fifth grade. I think he was in second. A third? First. 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 Dang. Yeah. He was in first grade. We literally still like right here with Jaden. Right here. Like legit right here. And then we took a picture and stuff. I was uh, yeah, we took, I still have my pictures from there. Wow, bro. Alright, so where we at now? We in Turtle Brook, Turtle Brook Village, man. This used to be the spot. My boy Jaron, shout out to Jaron, bro. My boy Jaron used to live here. We would come do our thing here. We, we would walk. Mind you, we had to drive here. We would walk all the way from where we was at before, walk all the way down here. We would ride our bikes sometimes too. We would walk here, whatever, and meet up with Jaron sometimes at his spot. His house is around the corner, so I'll show you his house too, his old house. Yo, riding a bike here, riding the bike was mainly what we did. It was fun riding the bike because the wind blowing in your face and us riding together as a group, bro. It was, it was fun at the time, so. Black Ops 2 was really the move, so like me, Jaron, Kamani, Tyron, like the whole group. We added each other on PS3. We would game with each other all night. Right here was, was Jaren's old crib. That was Jaren's crib. We would go do our thing. His room was upstairs. So we would come, we would play the game, like food. Sometimes he, when he knew he wasn't supposed to have us over, uh, <laughs> he would tell us to leave like 10 minutes early because he didn't want his mom, his mom would tweak on him if something crazy happened. We would go and we just play video games all day. 
taking pictures, doing a lot of stupid stuff, man. Like just being kids, doing what kids do. So it low key is crazy, but it's sad. Like when I think about it, this is 10 years ago, literally. I was 10 years old doing this oh, stuff. It's ago. exactly That's 10 years ago. Everybody knew when, once summertime hit, it was a wrap. Cause everybody, everybody was gonna be outside 24 yeah, seven. Outside you knew. So I showed y'all, I basically showed y'all the middle school like the uh, elementary school uh, bus stop. So this spot right here was the spot. We would wait here, the bus would pull over like right here and we would come and we would wait here the whole entire time, bro. Like legit, just standing here talking, whatever, goofing around, pushing each other, all that jazz. This is not even what it's called anymore. That's not even what it's called. Like I said earlier, what it's really called was the Arboretum. Like this was not, this was not it, bro. This was not it at all, so. Nah, it, it was black. It was like gray. The inside was black, gold letters, but that's really it. This is crazy, bro. All right, so next, this is where we headed. We head into um, the middle school, the Galvin Middle School, man. This is where, <laughs> oh my God. This is where little Kyrie was being made for basketball. This is the elementary side. This is where things got a little musty. Right here, the buses used to be lined up. You guys see this fire lane. So buses used to be lined up. Buses like bus A, bus B, bus C, all of them used to be out here. This is the cafeteria. They'll tell you which when to go and things like that. None of this was here, bruh. Like none of this was here. No extra buildings right here. None of that was here. The red thing used to be a web, a spider web oh, yeah, instead of that. It used to be a spider web, so people would climb on it. There's a field back there. So we used to play like capture the flag. Oh yeah, um, field day right there. Field, yep. Field back there. Yeah. Flag. Field hockey, cause you know how this town is. Memories, man. It looks so much. It just looks so much. Um, so much smaller. But it looks so much bigger when you were little. Man, the middle school. This is where real Kyrie started to really turn into Kyrie. So this part right here in sixth grade, when I first came here, we had a big fight during this time. It was just a whole bunch of chaos. It was like one day we stayed after school. But one day this, this uh, kid was just bothering me, like bothered me or whatever. So there was already a fight previous happening, mind you. So I'm already influenced to fight because I didn't care. One, I was out of control. Two. Like legit, the kid was just, the kid was literally like just picking on me the whole time and I was getting aggravated. We literally was fighting literally about right here, bro. The assistant principal's office was literally like, it used to be a big window, I think. So a window was right there and she could see everything. So we was fighting, boom, boom, boom. Whole bunch of other kids fighting while I was fighting too. So then after that, principal runs out, everybody scatters. I didn't know what to do. So I was like, I was shook and I was thinking of what to do. And then after I just ran up to her and just told what was going on. I snitched on everybody else but me. So I really didn't really get in trouble like that. Everybody else really did. So like I just went to snitch and then that was basically that. So I kind of ended up getting away with everything. As Soon as you go through them doors, the gym was right there. That big old thing right here. Gym was right there. Used to get it in in there, man. Like we had basketball tournaments. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. We had basketball practice when I played on the travel team. Um, we had practice and stuff there. It, it was cool. Like that's when I really started to be really become Kyrie. But mind you, still kids were doubting me and stuff all the time. Kids were saying I was trash. You know, this this town was like low key was racist to me sometimes because I was really it was mainly it's a majority of uh, predominantly white people here. So I'm kind of I kind of was the only black kid, really black kid on the team and. It was just a whole bunch of crap going on with that. But you know, for the most part, that's where I really started to become like Kyrie for real. I had my second girlfriend here. Her name. Huh? I'm not gonna say her name. <laughs> Definitely not gonna say her name. I'm not gonna say her name. But uh, and I was in sixth grade, she was in seventh grade. So I knew I was like that. I knew I was like that. Sometimes there were times where I got to, um, I would go to, I get put in detention because I would disrespect a teacher or, uh, you know, I would just, not listen, man. I was a hard-headed kid. I wasn't too bad, but I was disrespectful. And I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to fit in with everybody else here. And I really didn't know my purpose like that at, the, at a young age, obviously, like that. So 
I love to play basketball, but it wasn't something that made me, you know, uh, shape, like stay motivated and stay focused more. Cause it's just a whole bunch of crap that went on. I wanted to follow everybody. So I can remember a specific time where I played against my friend Marlon. We played one-on-one. -on -one. Bro, when I tell you there really used to be like 10, like 10, 12 kids deep here. I, I'm telling you, bro, it used to be like, we used to really run this, bro. Middle school is really where I started to really take basketball serious. Like around seventh grade. That's when I really got for real. Yeah, man, it's old stomping grounds. Never forget where you came from. Although I really didn't fool with this town like that, I still ain't forget where I came from, bro. I'm still that kid from Kenton. I grew up here, this is what they made me, so I can't really, can't really disrespect Canton like that, but you know, they helped me build who I am today, so I can't really discredit them for that.